when it was the hardest and we were basically on our knees, things really started to take off. It probably nearly tripled our business mm -hmm. in just the last year. It's what people want and pray for and hear about in masterminds and events, yep. but it comes after the hardship. Yeah, It's not just all wins. You work with couples all over the world. Every parent goes through the ego death, the identity evolution. Just let anything that we experience, good, bad, or in between, bring us closer together. Do you see each other as the problem or is it you two arms linked against the challenge? Mm -hmm. The way that you produce content that speaks directly to the people you serve is so brilliant. It isn't like, hey, let me just bust out a post. Like, no, this is someone's life on the other side. Yeah. This is their marriage. It's so I'm gonna have to hold it back. Like, Don't, I'm like, let it flow. I could be a full <laughs> sob. Jocelyn Freeman, welcome back yes. to Powerhouse Women. Thanks for having me. Oh my goodness. So this is so fun. We did get to do an episode with you and your amazing husband, Aaron. Yeah. This is our first like girl chat podcast Here we together. Go. The other thing I was thinking about is how the last time we had you on, you guys hadn't had your beautiful baby girl yet. More so this parents. Is, this is like a whole new era for you. Really? How would you describe, I mean, the last almost two years, your daughter's almost two. Yeah. How has that changed not just your life, but mm. your your whole business, your whole outlook on the work that you do? Truly completely different and so beautiful in so many ways. The word that came to me right away was expansive. Yeah. And of course, everyone talks about how you change so much as a parent, but truly like the way I think, the way I feel, what's important, what I prioritize, but also in terms of business, like, and just my, my mission, I feel more motivated than ever, more convicted than ever, but also it's like, prioritization. And I always say, I don't know what I did with all my time before, because as a parent, you know, I want to really kind of condense it into a few hours. Yeah. And yet things have only gotten bigger and have grown. And so I just am like, what did I do with my time before? Because now I can get so much done in this, but I just, I love being a parent and it's expanded me. It's challenged me. And there's been a big identity shift. I won't say that it is yeah. all highs and all happiness. I think every parent to different degrees goes through the ego death, goes through the identity evolution you know, adjust to the new lifestyle. So there's been a lot of reflection, a lot of learning, but overall, I feel like at two years, it's kind of like, I've like a landed, I've arrived, yeah. like I'm in this life and I love it. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's such a beautiful way to put it. And mm -hmm. um, what people may not know is you and I have been friends for a really long time. We just did yeah. the math about 12 years <laughs> and we've seen each other through so many different transformations, mm. which is one of my favorite things about our friendship. Yeah. Will you go a little bit deeper into what that ego death period really felt like for you? Because mm -hmm. even as a friend on the outside looking in, I can, I can totally see and experience the change, mm. but I'd love if you would speak a little bit more to what that, what that felt like and how it impacted you, because whether it's, women who are considering motherhood like mm -hmm. me or those who are prepping for that. I, I think that I don't hear enough people really talking about what that really feels like, especially if you're an ambitious woman who is building things and wondering, like, how is this going to change my life? I know it's going to change, mm -hmm. but how? Gosh, OK, let's see where to start, because there's so many things. But I'd, I'd say that First, just coming to terms with how different my life is now. And in some ways, it brings up the comparison mm -hmm. and being able to see, you know, just in full honesty, there's been times where early on, it's like I'd see you doing something fun mm -hmm. and do a trip or other friends. And maybe I would have been there in the past yeah. and I wasn't anymore. And that being like the, the of course, the story or the, the narrative being like, Oh, am, you know, am I not included anymore? But really when it came down, it's like, no, like I'm in a different season, you know, and they're mm. in a different season and everybody's doing different things. And so talking myself through that and being confronted with the different lifestyle, but on the other side is really, I think just so much more appreciation for mm -hmm. your friends and where they're at and celebrating each other's season. So it was like that, that wisdom that came afterwards uh, is a big thing. So definitely adjusting to your life being different than your friends uh, definitely is a big thing. And then when it comes to entrepreneurship, 
in the beginning, I definitely felt pulled into, you know, should I just be full time, you know, with baby, you know, not even want to do something else. And then when I, I, but I do feel this creative outlet. I want to work on something. I, I still love my work mm-hmm. uh, with couples. And so even just going through that narrative that you can have of like, should, you know, should it be this, should I be this being pulled in multiple directions and really just saying, you know, I can find the harmony mm-hmm. that works for me. I can have both and, and it truly has been possible to create a lifestyle where I can create those work hours, love it, have that expression. And I show up as a more present, fulfilled, joyful mom. And, you know, there's been different seasons, like in terms of having an in-home nanny the first year and then her being at a Montessori for a few hours now. And so you get to design that and what really works. But I mean, there's been so much to the ego evolution, the identity changing so much. What would you say you love most Mm. about the identity that you've stepped into now on the other side? I feel like the humility because Mm -hmm. I, you know, we've been doing self-development a long time. We met in a Mm self-development seminar, which is so fun to think (laughs) back to. Like we would meet at cafes and talk about the principles because none of our friends were, right? And so we were the outlet for each other to Mm -hmm. say, how are you implementing this in your life? And where's it showing up? And so- I'd say that decade, but prior to having her, it was about like me and wins and growth. And, and even in self-development itself, I think a lot of it is about getting to the joy and the wins. And, you know, so much of it is manifesting and creating your life Mm -hmm. and all those things. And I feel like now as a parent, there's this humility from kind of going through the challenges because again, there are, and I can happily share more of the challenges of that identity shift, but I feel like in that humility, I can connect even more with yeah. people and there's more even wisdom in it from, and I think that's a lot of what our message is even today mm-hmm. is that it's not all about the highlight is self-development growth. Life isn't just about the good moments. Yeah. And I feel like that's been a lot of the message for the last few years in the space. And to me now the message is like, no, there's happy and there's hard. Yeah. And the resilience is something to focus on. And so I think the humility in me has allowed me to connect more with people, friendships, also with our audience and with my husband. Like we just have so much more of a bond Mm. because of what we've gone through together. So beautiful and so well said. Mm. I for whatever reason, this memory is coming back to me. This was maybe months ago, maybe even be a year ago, we were having this conversation in my kitchen when you guys had come over, we were catching up just about this distinction between self-confidence and Mm self-acceptance. And I remember you sharing just so vulnerably, like some new things you were learning about the difference for for you. Because I think most people would look at both of us. I just think when you were talking about our young (laughs) Younger <laughs> selves, young, we're still young. Yeah. When you were talking about our younger selves, I just remember just this passion. We were just on fire for growth and we were starting to love business. And I think most people looking at us would say we're both confident women. Mm-hmm. We go after what we want. But I know that we both also have been really honest and vulnerable and gone through our own struggles as far as like feeling like we belong, feeling. And then here you throw into it a whole change in what your life looks like. Mm-hmm. But What would you say you've learned about the difference between what self-confidence looks like in your life and like true self-acceptance? Yeah. And that lesson came from doing therapy. I've been doing EMDR therapy for the last year and a half, which was a new addition. I've done lots of different techniques and modalities for growth, but my nervous system needed some support and EMDR has been really powerful for that. And so I had this realization that, yeah, my my growth journey has been getting to this place of feeling confident, which to me I would define as I know that I'm a person of integrity. I know I'm a person that can follow through. I know when I set my mind to something, I'll take the action Mm. to deliver on it. And that's just how it lives for me. And then what I've realized, though, was that there still was something missing in me accepting myself like my personality, my strengths, my weaknesses, my quirks. And a lot of my confidence or really my my acceptance was in relationship to other people accepting me. Mm -hmm. And one of my like core wounds I've had to work through in my, my journey is kind of being left out 
in things. Like I remember even just being a kid and that's been a thing and even judging myself, like I'm, I'm different than people and I'm not accept, I'm not in that in crowd, for example. And so this self-acceptance journey I've been on came after having a couple big breakdowns with a, a friend and a family member at the same time. And it was really well, rocked that's me. Yep. Yeah, that's great. Really rocked me. And it was what could have happened in that in one relationship in particular could have been abandonment and could have been rejection. Now we've repaired that relationship and it's actually only blossomed since then, but it triggered in me, wow, I kind of only accept myself if these people I hold high in my mind and in my heart accept me. And what if they did reject me? What if they felt I didn't align with them anymore? What would that mean about me? And I tear up even just thinking about how much I have come to this place of loving myself and that even if relationships evolved or changed or ended, that I can look in the mirror and be like, Jocelyn, I love you and I accept you. And even if you're not perfect and even if you have quirks and a pers different personality, like I can hang out with me, yeah. you know, and yeah. that I can be really fulfilled with my daughter, with my husband. And yeah. I think that something changed when I came into that acceptance and I feel like my relationships have only gotten stronger. I think you even said something to me about how you felt a shift mm. in me. And like, there's, there is even more of a magnetism yeah. between the relationships I feel. Yeah. You know, we've been with each other through so many of these evolutions and even to the point where when we when we book our podcast guests, we ask them one question on the forum that's like, well, how would your best friends describe oh, yeah. you? And your answer was perfect. You were like, I don't know. How would you describe me? <sighs> and what I love about you the most, mm. what I've always loved about our friendship is like your consistent commitment to your own growth and to mm. looking inward to simultaneously you have this ability to support people around you mm -hmm. while also holding massive space for yourself mm -hmm. and it's been it's been especially beautiful watching you become a mother and watching the evolution in your marriage mm -hmm. but also in your business because your business has thrived and you've experienced some really really massive growth especially in the last couple of years yeah do you have a moment where you guys look back and you're like, oh, this was the catalyst? Because mm. I know looking, having the inside vi view of it, yeah. it's been consistency mm -hmm. for a really freaking long time. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then there were these moments where you started to have even like vir virality on some of your posts mm -hmm. and just a lot more momentum. What would you pinpoint to any of like the inner work that was behind that? Mm -hmm. And then I do want to dig into like even some strategy of how you guys create content and create this conversation that pulls in the exact perfect mm. people that you serve. Yes. Well, I'll, I'll come back to the content piece, which I love diving yeah. into that, you know, yeah, we have been consistent for years and I, I do see why they say most businesses fail in the first five years mm -hmm. because it is just this effort and this you experience so many doubts and it's like a plane taking off. It's like a lot of effort for that time. Uh, but we kept going and kept going, and kept learning. And I'd say, so our business was like consistently doing well enough that my husband and I have been full time in it up until, so we had our daughter December of 2021 and took some time off with her. And when we started to go back to work, was like, okay, how do we though produce the same or more with less time? You know, because I do want only limited hours that I'm working. I want to be with my daughter as much as I can. And that's the beauty of entrepreneurship, right? Is getting to, mm -hmm. to design that schedule. And I experienced though doubt and we went to lunch and it was also a hard time because we had gotten into another investment that was just supposed to be us like just diversifying, right? And it mm -hmm. went really poorly because of who we partnered with, not because of that industry itself. But we were experiencing like a lot of hardship and doubt at this time. Like, are we meant to continue? Because shouldn't we be winning more if we're meant to continue? And, and this was really hard, this investment and the amount we lost and all the things. And so with you and definitely talking through just even the mindset, but also that was a moment when I truly had to strengthen my faith too. Mm -hmm. And it was like a coming to Jesus moment for me and being able to kind of reach that, that, you know, people say the rock bottom, which I've had multiple kind of in my life to my degree, everyone's looks yeah. different, but reaching that breaking point 
of where you're just about to give up, but yet certain things just show you keep going. And so I feel like it was a combination of, yes, some strategy and actions, which I'll, I'll share about in terms of the business, the content, all that. But also it was like, we called on God and we were like, if we're meant to continue, like we need some signals, we need some signs here. So part, a lot of it was like a God thing. Yeah. And, and literally the breaking point, like when it was the hardest and we were basically on our knees, you know, asking for guidance, support and signs is when things really started to take off and just honestly explode. And we're, I, every day I am seriously so yeah. grateful and it's, it's what people want and pray for and hear about in masterminds and events yep. and where people want to get to and when you live it, but it comes after the hardship. Yeah. It's not just all wins. I, okay. This is so important to talk about. Mm -hmm. I want to go to that moment. The word that's coming to me is like surrender. Yes. Can you talk a little bit more about that moment? Mm -hmm. Because was it like an immediate realization that you needed to call on God? You needed to call on someone stronger than you mm -hmm. or did it take a little while? Like take us to that moment. Cause I, I feel like there's someone listening to this right now who's in that moment mm -hmm. and this you saying this might be their sign to not give up. Mm -hmm. But I think it's so beautiful what you're sharing is really like when we're trying to do it ourselves, yeah. we are choosing to do it mm -hmm. the hard way. Yeah. Gosh, I that moment, the, that time is so vivid because I had a young baby and we were living in a house that we didn't love because we had like just moved and it was kind of like a last minute rental and we were feeling hardship with the investment, with the business. And so it's, vi it's very vivid. And yet I feel so distant from it too, right? And wow. that's one thing that's hard to remember in those moments is that it is temporary and you mm. will get through it. It just feels really hard mm. when you're in it. So hindsight is always great, but it was honestly like just using that time to reflect and say, okay, what would it look like to have different options? And truly we did outline different options. Okay, here is option A, you know, if we could go down this path and get a job, you could get a job and I could be stay at home mom. It could be, we both get jobs. It could be that we continue the business, but we make changes and true. I think sometimes we need to do that. We actually need yes. to have those conversations of options just so our mind even can be at ease. So powerful. Yeah. So that was supportive in that time. And then honestly, it was like in that moment, I also became more convicted with our message of mm -hmm. what we're here to do because I was with this baby and I want nothing more, like nothing is more important to me than her getting to see a healthy marriage, a loving family. Like that is, and I'm a child of divorce and my parents are, you know, in their lives now and that was what was best for them. But my mission, my purpose, I feel is to reinvigorate thriving, happy families mm. for kids, the future generations to see healthy marriages, which is missing so much right now. I think everyone would agree that that has become more rare. And so I became more convicted in that. Like I want her to see that. And then when I became a parent, personally, I didn't like, I wasn't a kid person before having her, you know, like- <laughs> We can be honest here. Yeah, I'm not one of those people that's like, oh, kids, like, you know, even to this day, it's like my my close, close friends, you know, I love their kids, but other Same. periphery kids, kids, I'm not like one of those people. Yeah. And so- <laughs> I, it felt always kind of distant to me, you know, yeah. the idea of like, or that connection to children, but having her, I don't know, maybe most mothers feel this. I'm not sure, but I just felt this connection universally to children and to the vulnerability and to the impact that our modeling has on them. And I just think that one of the most important things right now is that they are shown healthy love. Mm. And so to bring that back, it was, I became more convicted of that than ever in that hardship. And my message changed. So leading into the content, so it was the God thing, it was the breakdown, it was reaching that breaking point, also becoming more convicted in the message and that translated into the content. Yeah. And if you want, I don't know if there's specific questions you want to ask on me, but to me on that, but just my message, our, I'm, I'm our marketing person. So my husband and I do the coaching together, workshops together. Everything is us, the content curriculum, but I'm the person that translates that into content. Mm -hmm. uh, that's mm -hmm. one of my, my gifts I feel is through writing, through language. 
And so I speak for us. It yeah. is including him yeah. and all of his messages. But uh, my message became even more convicted. And again, that humility, I think, started to get translated into the content. Mm. Okay. And we are going to like do a brief masterclass on the viral content you guys do create. But there was something else that came to me. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to make sure we talk about this, too, because... When you're talking about the conviction, mm -hmm. because you do work with couples mm -hmm. and here you and your husband are going through a really challenging time. Yeah. And I've talked a lot about like Elliot and I have been through one of those years this year where it just feels like we're hitting up against more challenges than we have all at one time mm -hmm. in our marriage so far. And it's taken a different kind of relating to each other, a different kind of humility and vulnerability with each other to make sure that we stay strong in the challenging season. So what helped you guys really flourish? What helped you really stay connected to one another? Did you have moments where mm. you were not as connected mm. in that season specifically where you were up against all these challenges? Gosh, that's such a good question. I think that there were moments where we weren't united, but overall we were really a team. And, and that's, you know, one of the things we really talk about and get very tangible into what that looks like. We've definitely had our seasons where we aren't, you know, we have our arguments where we make each other the enemy, but we repair really quickly. That's a lot of what we talk about in our marriage content. But in that season specifically, I feel more than ever, we really did link arms. Yeah. And I think what helped was that we both were stepping into that humility. Neither of us were blaming each other. And honestly, like one of the hardships we got into was my fault. And one of the hardships we got into like was his fault in that we both made decisions that affected us. We could have easily blamed each other. We could have easily turned against each other. But I feel like because we were looking at our daughter and she was this young little baby and we saw there's different realities possible here right now based on how we act right now like this is a crucible moment and we talk about that too is like there are these crucible moments where your decision your actions truly can split and create different future realities and I know that might sound very like meta but I think that's a reality and so we I think realized that it was a crucible moment and we were very thoughtful about how we wanted to act in that time because of it truly being our family. And so I think it was just that, that realization and seeing like we're in it right now. But one thing we try to do our best in our self-development journey is try to give ourselves perspective, like zoom out. Okay. We're in it right now. We're in the trenches. It feels really hard, but we also know like we're going to come out and we're going to see it from this. And I, I think I've had enough experiences. I mean, you know, I, I broke my back and I completely ended a career in the medical field. Like I was in one of those moments where you're in it, you're bedridden. So I've had enough life experiences where you're, you know, it feels really hard right now, but later you zoom out and it's like just part of your story. So we had that perspective. And I think that was mm -hmm. what kept us a team and looking bigger picture yeah. really helped us. How important is that distinction of the perspective of being a team mm -hmm. for couples? Because you work with couples all over the world. Yeah. You have an amazing top podcast mm -hmm. in the relationship space. We'll share all this at the end. An amazing book, The Argument Hangover, multiple books, but mm -hmm. that's your most recent yeah. one. How important is just, I, I'm hearing you say that. I'm like, wow, that's really, even just looking at your relationship through that alone. Yes. How transformative that is. How important is that in I'm, our relationship? I mean, it's one of the most important things. I f when we see, and we talk, work with couples all the way from preparing for marriage to married 52 years of marriage, all the way in between, as you said, all over the world, different cultures, backgrounds. And we can see a big difference between those who have the mindset of we and team, and we're in this together. And these are going to be the chapters and the seasons Again, I think people really do lose sight of that, that when you're married to someone, if you plan to be married a long time, you're going to go through many different seasons. And I think people sometimes have this expectation or belief that it's supposed to kind of always be good. You know, even when you look at aspirational content online related to marriage, date nights and love languages and, you know, loving on each other and affection, all those things. Yes, yes, yes but not all seasons are going to be wins. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some hard, I mean, you guys are in one that for you is a hard one right now, Yeah. but yeah. that will make you more resilient and bonded. And when you are 
you know, older, but still hot and beautiful, <laughs> like you will have more wisdom and mm -hmm. you just will, I feel like that's where bond is formed. And so Agreed, yeah. as a team saying we are in this life together, we're going to go through all kinds of seasons. Some are going to be wins, some are going to be more challenging, but we're in it together. We want to grow wiser. We want to grow more resilient. Mm -hmm. And so let's go through this challenge together as opposed to making each other the enemy. Yeah. And as you really lay that out, I realize how that that is actually what has sustained Elliot and I through this season is the way we've always said it is this prayer of just let anything that we experience, good, bad, or in between, bring us closer together. Mm -hmm. That's the default that we're always looking for. And so when you were talking about that ability to play things out, like actually take a step back and say, okay, I will literally have these moments where maybe I'm in an upset and I want to lash out or I want to make him wrong or blame him for something. And I'll pause in my mind and I'll be like, what kind of response do I think I'm going to get from that? Yeah. And as silly as it sounds, actually playing it out and realizing that it, it's me lashing out. I'll probably regret it later. Mm -hmm. It will make him feel disconnected from me. And it's just going to cause a period of disconnection, mm -hmm. depending on what kind of mood he's in. Also, yep. you know, like if he's able to diffuse the anger or if, if it really hurts, then I'm really just causing for myself more separation. And that's ultimately what I don't want. Right. And it's literally just by implementing the tools that you guys teach and realizing that these little habits over time are ultimately what build a really strong partnership. Yes. And at the end of the day, that's what we want. We mm -hmm. want a partnership. We want to feel like that's our person. Like yes. they would go to battle with us. Mm -hmm. And Elliot's the the battle type. Yeah. He will go to battle, but but it's taken time mm -hmm. and repetition of choosing that context mm -hmm. over I guess whatever else we could choose. Yes. Well, and exactly what I'm hearing and what you're saying too is that you you see the challenge together. Yeah. Like we can still have hard conversations. There are times we need to be honest with each other. Hey, here's what we're up against and here's where I maybe need more involvement from you yeah. or where I see you you play a part and I play a part. So those honest hard conversations need to happen at times. Mm -hmm. Use approach always matters. Exactly what you're saying, right? How we approach but also it's like we are up against this challenge together as opposed to you're in my way of yeah. this challenge or you're creating this challenge. And it's completely we have a visual that we posted before of like, do you see each other as the problem or is it you two arms linked against the challenge? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that completely frames your conversation in a different way. Yeah. OK, so this is kind of the perfect segue into talking a little bit about your content strategy, mm -hmm. which has been a huge driver for the growth of your your business. Yeah. And even if someone has never listened to the podcast, hasn't read the book yet, even just by connecting with you guys on Instagram, which is where you're mostly active, mm -hmm. the value mm. in the content that you create is enormous. Oh, thank you. It's like, I have these moments where I'm like, that is my, these are my friends. <laughs> like they are so brilliant. The number of people that I send to your Instagram, oh. both for the relationship content, but also just to study the way that you produce content that speaks directly to the people you serve is mm. so brilliant. Thank you. So brilliant. So, okay, first I want you to take us back to when things really started to grow mm -hmm. on Instagram specifically. Yeah. Was it, tell me if I'm remembering this correctly, it was like there was this moment where one reel kind of got a lot of traction yeah. and then brought a lot of visibility to mm -hmm. your profile. Am I remembering that? Absolutely. And it was only like within the last year, wasn't it? That was two, about two years oh gosh, ago. What is time? Year and a half, two I years. Some, right after like having our daughter okay. somewhere in there. Yeah. And I, I mean, yeah, we could really unpack like some of these, these nuggets in this sequence. And I can definitely share with you some of the ways I think about content. But what definitely in catching momentum, it was a particular reel that struck. Now we'd been consistent before. I think sometimes yes. people like just start an account mm -hmm. and they like are like, let me learn the viral, you know, mm -hmm. real hacks. I'm going to attend this webinar and they're going to, and yes, all, there are hacks that support that, but we'd been consistent. And I, I'll tell you more too about how I um, even consume content and how I really observe it. But definitely one reel caught on, caught the momentum, but then that, made me learn and, and support creating more content, but my message has even changed. So I want to just say when I look at content online, and this has been for the last several years, I 
have a particular lens in which I'm looking at content. So I really look at it and, and when I see things that are winning or not winning, but succeeding, resonating, I really think what's working about this. Mm -hmm. And it's not usually the fancy things going on that a lot of people focus on. Oh, it's that they did this quick shift thing. And, right. Yeah. You know, like th that a lot of times it's the words there's something, and what I notice throughout it all is that when there's vulnerability or true transparency, and, and not that this is like used in a manipulative way, but like when there's like human pain, again, pe so much people, people want to focus on like the wins, the highlights. And of course people love that. People love a good like laughter, real, a happy moment. I'm not saying any of that, but I really have paid attention to the power of words. Mm -hmm. And I feel like even more so this year, a lot of people are outsourcing their words to things like AI and ChatGPT. I can tell straight up when a post, a caption is written by ChatGPT. It's, I think it's very clear. And I think people would be wise to not rely so much on it. Now, can AI help us and support us with like ideas and brainstorming and help me think of an even more clear way to say, sure. Yeah. But in terms of the power of words, because that's what makes our content go viral. And that one reel did help us take off. But the last year and a half, two years, whenever that happened, it has only expanded. And I say this from humility, but like, even a recent post had half a million shares mm -hmm. because of the words. It wasn't written by AI. It was written by me. And here's a big thing. I write down the very human moments in our sessions. Yes. Like uh, someone will say something that is so honest, so captures the feeling as a human in a, in a marriage. I'll write it down. And then I really contemplate it. And I think like, what? what do people feel? You know, I don't, I am not lazy or shorthanded with content. I'll tell you with the posts that really resonate and I'd say most of ours do well. Like we don't have a lot of posts that flop or that just get very, very, you know, little engagement. Like I'm grateful to say that most of ours really land. I probably spent an hour to an hour and a half on that one post. Yeah. Not just in writing it, before that, I honestly probably contemplated it for several hours mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm, I really cherish that moment of connection between me and the reader. And I know that might sound silly because it's like a social media post, but to me, I, I do view it as kind of an art form. It is an, I love writing and I don't do like blogs or even, you know, other maybe long form. We do have a book, but I really cherish that moment of writing that content because I know on the other side is someone who maybe just got in an argument with their spouse and they're in the car and they're in it and I want to connect with them. Um, it isn't like, hey, let me just bust out a post. It's like, no, this is someone's life on the other side. Yeah, This is their marriage uh, or maybe they're in a hard season and they need that. So I really feel that's important to remember who's on the other side of it. And so I think people can tell the richness I put into the post, the amount of time. And I hope that any of you who are listening who want to do that, even say like, maybe I do need to actually invest more time mm. into the content, but not because it's like just something you have to do, but because it's a connection point. Yeah. And so that's, yeah. Anything specific you want to oh, ask in that? It's, I mean, it's back to the basics. You touched on consistency because you're right. When you've had these moments where new eyes are flooding mm -hmm. to your account, they see more helpful content on the yeah. page that you guys have created over years. Mm -hmm. But then there's this, it was really cool to hear you speak to it because I feel it mm -hmm. when I'm reading your posts, watching your videos but to hear you explain the level of intention that goes into it. Mm -hmm. And I've always said, and this is one of the things that has helped us really master that message piece mm -hmm. with, with the women that we serve is paying attention to the things that people are saying to you mm -hmm. when they're in those moments where they're really looking for help, they're looking for guidance. Because when we can speak to that emotion, mm -hmm. which is what you so beautifully captured there, that's where we can make an actual connection. Yeah. 
So will you speak a little bit to how this content strategy mm-hmm. that you've invested in has impacted your business and maybe yeah. even a little bit about what your business model is so people have that context too? Yeah. So for years prior, our main offering has been coaching, which we do love. Like, And I know a lot of people really want to scale that out and that's something you want to do less and less of, but we really love that connection two on two because we do work with the couple together. So we really enjoy the coaching However, you do reach a point where you do only have so many hours. And when you become a parent, you want to even scale those down, you know, condense those. And here's the thing. I think that when people talk about diversifying and then coming out with other products, uh, low ticket, middle ticket, et cetera, I think a lot of people do that or want to do that even too early. Mm -hmm. This is just my personal philosophy. I think there's something so important, especially if you're going to be a teacher, an educator, a self-development mentor in any space, you need that in the trenches time one-on-one with people. I totally agree. I just think people want to skip that a lot of times. And I just personally believe that is so important. That's where so much wisdom comes from, knowledge, connecting deeper to specifics Mm -hmm. of what people deal with and hone your craft. So I, that's just a message I really preach is like, don't skip over that part Mm -hmm. that that makes you such an expert and helps you connect with people. So we'd been coaching for years, living a great life with that, good income, both in it. But you do definitely reach a point, especially when becoming a parent, where you need to scale that down a little bit or Mm -hmm. you only have so many hours. And as we've been consistent for eight years, we did get to a point where we had a wait list. So then you're like, well, okay, how can we serve people too who want to work with us? We can't fit them in. And also when your audience grows, because our audience grew, it went from, just to give people an idea, from about, I think it was around 20,000 people, which was exciting, you know, especially when you reach that first 10K. Oh my gosh, remember how hard we worked for that (gasps) first 10? Yes, and that's so much fun. (laughs) And that's a huge win, you know? Mm -hmm. And that, we had a great business, even at 10K followers. And then you get to 20, right? But then, like you said, one reel in particular helped us gain even momentum. And we did go from 20K to about a hundred and something, 110 maybe. I remember that. And then we cut the momentum again. I was consistent with content and I was very thoughtful. I wasn't just trying to pump out, Mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't volume. It really was quality. Again, I spent hours thinking about these, the words are so important. And so catch, you know, keep that momentum going. And so as the content was growing, our audience was really growing, had to create, new products, you know, and we did have little mini courses here and there that sure, once in a while people were buying or we would promote from time to time on a webinar, but coaching was our main, main thing. And so we created these products and thanks to meeting up with you for you and Elliot for a little night. And you just made the side comment about these offerings you had heard someone else in your mastermind creating Mm -hmm. and how much it was supporting their business. And that little kind of side comment that you made was more than what we'd get in like a mastermind. You Mm -hmm. know, it was just, it was the perfect timing and the thing. So thanks, girl. Uh, for I got that. you. But you you shared that and we implemented it. And it was, again, the right time. Had we tried to implement that exactly six months prior, maybe produce a few hundred bucks, you know, a month, something like that. But it was with the audience growth because it's a low ticket, you know, offers, which I pe- think people underestimate the power of those. Everyone's like, no, create a thousand dollar offer, a ten thousand dollar, fifty thousand dollar offer. And yes, those are important at different stages in your business and different models. But when your audience gets to that volume, you can succeed with less costing products. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing, you know, we also pay attention to what's happening in the market and you have to also know your buyer. And so there's different groups. So when you serve people who are entrepreneurs, of course, they're going to invest more into their business. It's normal to be like, yeah, a thousand dollar program, $10,000 mastermind, you know, and then as you get bigger, even higher end masterminds, marriage is different. You know, the the frame of mind isn't, yeah, let me invest in a $10,000 or $25,000 group program. Like that's not the mentality. Sure. Could you find a few people at a celebrity level to do that. But in terms of the mainstream world, so you have to know your audience too, as everyone says. Mm -hmm. But we came out with those offers. And I mean, I I don't want to give specific numbers because I feel like people could compare, but it has 
probably nearly tripled our business Mm -hmm. uh, in just the last year from all that momentum and truly feel grateful. Like I do not take it for granted. And it's to feel that sense of kind of finally getting a win, you know, from all the hard work and the the momentum. It just, it's kind of like, phew, thank you. (laughs) I needed this a little bit. (laughs) You do reach that point, you know? Which I'm so grateful for your transparency Mm -hmm. in the full journey, because the truth is if we just sat here and talked about the growth in the last year, we would be leaving out the part that is necessary Mm -hmm. if people want to have that season, which this is a season two of explosive growth. And, and I think what's, what my mission is Mm -hmm. and how my message has evolved is wanting to bring women these real conversations of just as much highlighting the the hard moments as we are the successes so that everyone sees what is possible but they also see that it's normal Mm -hmm. and sometimes necessary to go through those seasons of of hardship Mm -hmm. to grow you into the person who's ready for what's coming next yes so if you could go back let's say we could go back Mm -hmm. to Lindsay and Jocelyn who met at the back of the room on a break at this personal development seminar yeah or maybe it's the version of us that was really excited about starting businesses. Mm -hmm. If you could give that version of yourself or ourselves Mm -hmm. some advice, what would that be? Mm. Oh my gosh. Cause I literally had this vivid memory. We had done so many different things together cause we were building a biz- health business together at one point, but we've also seen each other create different things. And I'll never forget us sitting on the living room floor in my little apartment and us dreaming. And I just hope everyone who listens to Lindsay knows like she has shown up when there's one person in the room, Mm. you know, when we would have our business meetings and there was three people in the room four. like, so you just always have shown up as if there's 500 people Mm -hmm. in the room. And that's what I think makes you such a remarkable person. And you've done that for 12 years. Mm -hmm. And that's why people love Lindsay and are drawn to her. I was like, you were one of the only people who was around during the love Lindsay (laughs) blog days. You might be actually, I was saying, I was the reader. I said, I never showed it to anyone, but I might've actually showed it to you. I did see it. I might've been the one out <laughs> the of three readers years. and I loved it. I probably commented on it. Probably. You're such but a, you did. You always one. showed up Yeah. when there was one pe- person in the room, three people in the room, as if there were 500 mm-hmm. with just as much intention and love and commitment to people. So that's why you're amazing. Uh, but going back, if I could share something Man, I I don't even know because I feel like what we went through was what we needed to go through. But if I was to give myself some wisdom, I guess it would just be embrace the hard moments, you know, and embrace getting triggered and embrace like doubting yourself. Go there because actually in that is where you're going to get to connect more with people. And and I think today people are drawn to the vulnerability, drawn to the human moments. I look at content, I mean, I both in our industry and, and others, and I see a huge difference in engagement between people who are just sharing things that look good and our wins and celebrations and the phone moments. And again, we need to share some of that. I'm not saying only don't ever do any of that versus those who are like raw and human and using words that are so potent and like wow, I'm, I'm driving to work and I thought I was the only one thinking that today or, or feeling that way. And so I would just tell myself back then, like embrace the hard moments. You're going to get through it. You're going to end up wiser on the other side. And I f- I'm grateful for the different seasons of, of life. And I'm excited to see in the next 10 years what seasons I go through. But this year I did say that my word for the year is a winning season. So I this year I'm We're declaring winning season because I went through my hard one last year. So I'm like, this one's going to be a winning one. We saw this meme the other day that was like this someone with a phone saying, I'm just calling God to make sure that I'm subscribed to the blessed and highly favored plan yes. and not the it was like trials and tribulations plan for next year. Yes. So we're claiming that. Mm-hmm. I am so grateful for this conversation. Mm. I got so much out of it. Mm. I know those of you listening did too, but I'm, I'm grateful to have a friend who's been on the journey for so Mm. many of the different seasons and always makes me want to be a better version of myself. So thank you for Mm. being that for me. 
I already mentioned your amazing podcast, yeah. your book. Tell everyone where they can connect with you both online and offline. Yeah. And then I have just one final question Ooh. to wrap it up. Well, I think the easiest go-to place since we've been talking about it is our Instagram because there you can see our content, see how we do it. But that has our website as well and everything. So that's meet underscore the Freemans. Me underscore. The, that's also our website URL. You okay, could, perfect. We like to keep it easy. You easy. met one Freeman, then you can There's meet two. the Freeman. Everybody. Yep. <laughs> and then you'll get to see our gorgeous daughter as well in her, in our lives. So that's a great place. You see everything from our mm -hmm. couples workshops. We do in-person events. And that's another thing that's fun to share with people about is like events being yeah. amazing. You'll see our book. You'll see our challenges, our guides. We've got all kinds of goodies. We like to have things for different levels mm -hmm. uh, and, and specific things that people are going through in their marriage. Because mm. I feel like that's another evolution in business is that yeah. it's less of like solve everything in my life yeah. to I have this one thing. Can you just help me solve this like this week? You know, like, so yes, we can. Very targeted, specific things. So yeah, I'd say Instagram and then our website URL are good places to and go. Talk about the book too, because the sure. book has been a huge resource yeah. for people. Yeah. So the argument hangover, you all probably know what that hangover feeling is uh -huh. like, right? Afterwards. But yeah, that's a, a book that we wrote together prior to having our daughter. So I was thinking about our next Interesting. book. Interesting. Yes. Have, yeah. I'm, I feel another one's coming soon but it yeah we've got some time but the argument hangover people really resonate and one thing we're passionate about is that content that resonates with men and women yes you know i feel like that's missing a lot in the marriage space a lot of it is directed towards women we do this as a couple so you get the mindset of a male and a female and mm -hmm. content that feels collaborative and isn't the pointing the finger at anyone you both are playing a part so yeah our book's a good place too and you're now that you say that, I'm like, yeah, it is. It's so balanced. It's not making men the villain. It's mm -hmm. not making women the villain. It's really, even your content has that team mm. approach. Thank you. I love that. So this is such a fun question to ask everyone that I sit down with, mm -hmm. but specifically the women who've been in my life for mm -hmm. as long as you have. And it's an opportunity for you to pause and acknowledge yourself Aww. for something that you just want to celebrate for, the, for no reason at all, mm -hmm. other than you want to celebrate it right now. We just call it your powerhouse moment. Aww. So if you were to choose a recent powerhouse moment mm. that you want to celebrate with us, mm. what's the first thing that comes to mind? Literally my daughter came to my mind. I love her so much. It's not, I'm going to have to hold it back. Like, Don't. I'm not, like, I could be a full <laughs> sob, but no. I feel like my powerhouse moments is like maybe cliche as it sounds or truly like just sitting there, you know, this morning before getting ready. And it's like, you know, you're getting ready to go to a podcast, but you're in mom mode. And just sitting with her and like looking into her eyes and she's learning these words and she's still like not saying it perfectly, but I can communicate with her. I know. And when I acknowledge what word she's trying to say, you can see she feels heard, you know, and she has this like moment of like, she knew what I meant, you know? And so I don't know, just that for me, like those moments of just intimacy with her and like just pure joy of connecting soul to soul with her just... I love her so much. There's nothing better. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for this beautiful conversation mm. and for being here. No, oh, thank you for being amazing in yourself and having me. I love you. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> Ending with tears. <laughs>